Why did Morning. Rishi Sunak change his mind about um, heading to COP27? Well, I think uh, Rishi Sunak's always been very, very keen and has actually financed a lot of uh, funding in the past uh, on climate change, but actually just come in as Prime Minister. Obviously, we've got this huge, uh, hugely important uh, task of, of settling the economy, the awesome statement coming up. I think he just wanted to make sure he had that in hand before jetting off. Uh, with that, uh, I think, having worked on very intensively, he's now gone there. Uh, and, uh, as you say, he'll be making further announcements on climate later today. So there's no more work to be done now ahead of the 17th of November on the economy? Well, I think the Chancellor is still working very hard on it, and uh, I know that I've been working with, with the PM, the Chancellor, uh, and myself on the, the, the business, the, the climate, the energy aspects of that. But, um, but I think the, you know, the vast uh, amount of work's uh, been done, and so he felt it was uh, you know, appropriate to, to leave the country. But as ever, and I think it's a good thing in a Prime Minister, his first priority is to make sure that, uh, particularly with that rather choppy period that we've been through, um, that, the, uh, that things are stabilised here. Oh, you've been working on it um, as well, the autumn statement. What's in it? <laughs> well, of course, you'll have to wait until the uh, 17th, so not, not too long now. Um, I thought I'd wait, try. But, uh, I mean, I think it's, yeah, it's a good worth a try. OK. Uh, he's gone, hasn't he, because Boris Johnson's there. That's why the Prime Minister's decided to go. Well, I, no, I don't agree. Uh, I, I, look, as I said, Rishi's actually put a lot of uh, funding into um, climate uh, throughout his time as Chancellor. Before he became um, Prime Minister, he's out there today uh, announcing uh, £65 million uh, for green energy uh, projects in developing countries. And actually, I'm here in, in Teesside today um, uh, uh, announcing a, a very important uh, lithium refinery, green lithium refinery, the, the first in not just this country, but the first in Europe. This is all about being much more energy uh, independent, energy sovereignty uh, for the UK. Uh, this will produce about 7% of Europe's entire lithium, refined lithium needs uh, in years to come. Don't we need to worry about lithium batteries? I mean, they're not particularly stable batteries, are they? Um, well, I mean, lithium's involved in all sorts of um, batteries, from products we use in, in homes, our mobile phones, to motor cars we, we drive. Um, I, I've driven an electric car for the last three or four years. Seems perfectly stable uh, to me. And actually, I've always thought with um, you know, things like electric cars, people think nothing of driving around with petrol cars with essentially explosions going on in the engine, uh, you know, in order to... Uh, create the create the, uh, the, the the momentum for the car for the motor um, for the engine, but you know that's that with, with electric vehicles um, you certainly have a lot less of, of, of that going on. So okay. uh, no, I think the safety record's pretty good. Yeah, well, uh, I think airlines might uh, disagree with you. Many of them don't want to carry them. Um, that's your um, physics lesson this morning, kids. You can head off to school now. Talk to me about okay. fossil uh, fuels, though. Um, profits on fossil fuels should those. Um, be uh, subject to a windfall tax? Is that something that perhaps the Prime Minister should be talking about while he's over at COP27? Well, I think that might be a clever way of asking me what's in the autumn statement uh, again. Uh, but, you know, we, we will be setting that out, and the Chancellor will be setting that out very shortly. I mean, it is the case that because fuel prices have been so high, uh, there have been uh, unexpected uh, profits, of course. Uh, but it, I think it's important that we do carry on investing uh, in making sure, not on fossil fuels, but on the renewable energy as well, that we've, we've got the uh, capacity, we've got the, uh, the, the ability to, to, to get that market moving, which is why the lithium refinery uh, that I'm talking about here in the northeast today is so important. Um, but you will need to wait, as I say, till the 17th, till the, uh, till okay. the autumn statement I think, uh, on I think exactly you gave us, which measures are in there. Sure. I think you gave us a massive hint there, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, but I, what I do want to ask you about is international trade. I'm looking at uh, the front page of The Times this morning. And basically half of uh, the, not international trade, the international development, supporting those that can't support themselves, was 0.7% of GDP, down to 0.5%, we're told, because we can't afford 07 at the moment. And according to the front page of The Times this morning, half of that, almost half of that, is being spent here in the UK. So that's, you know, that's just clever accounting, isn't it? Well, I mean, there are very strict rules, actually, for what 
uh, can qualify uh, as um, aid, uh, and those are, those are set down in a way that, that ministers can't just change. Uh, it's always been the case that uh, people who uh, come to the uh, UK uh, under certain circumstances, asylum seekers, for example, uh, are a part of that expenditure. Uh, of course, what we've seen is um, that large number of people uh, travelling across the uh, English Channel uh, with people traffickers, um, and, uh, and, and those numbers have been high, and so some of that money uh, is used in, in that way. But that, that's nothing new. That, that's always been the case. You were Home Secretary, I think, what, for five days um, in total, but while you were there, you had a look at the paperwork and you said, We've got to get some of these asylum seekers out of uh, these units. We've seen what's happened while I've been away and, and the problems that were caused there. Why were you so desperate to get them into hotels? Well, simply that um, we've got to be careful not to break the law ourselves uh, by detaining um, people who are able to uh, be uh, outside of that, what is not a detention centre, but a processing centre at Manston. So really just a question of making sure that we were acting within the law uh, and, uh, and that's something that the Home Secretary is, is continuing to do now. Um, so, you know, I, I, it really just a, a question of making sure that uh, we're... First of all, trying to do all we can to prevent people from making that perilous, dangerous journey, being people trafficked, uh, and then secondly, uh, making sure that we keep ourselves within the law, uh, not detaining people when, in fact, uh, they uh, are able to be uh, moved on rather than kept in what's just a processing centre. So we were breaking the law. Well, the, the advice I have is very clear that we were in danger uh, of doing that if we weren't acting. Uh, and I did act uh, during six days uh, in the job, and uh, I noticed that the Home Secretary has continued to uh, act now as well. Yeah, but the previous Home Secretary that is now the present Home Secretary, I'm sure we can keep up on that one, um, she was breaking the law, was she? Well, I, I didn't see the advice that she was um, getting. What I saw was uh, that the numbers had increased when I got there. Uh, the advice was very clear. Um, it was that we needed to do a number of different things, not just actually moving people out. There's a, a, a way of reconfiguring uh, the processing centre in order to make sure that we were uh, maintaining uh, uh, the, the kind of correct legal um, structure for what is, as I say, a processing centre, not a detention centre. Uh, and I took that decision as well. Uh, and the Home Secretary's continued uh, on the same path. So I think we're at one about because, what needed to be done. Yeah. I didn't see the advice beforehand, but I saw what I was... Did you ask for it? Did you ask to see the previous advice? Uh, no, so, I mean, normally what happens is you, as, as a Secretary of State, you're provided with advice and you're invited to take it into uh, account and make the, the judgment based of it. The, the advice was very clear to me. I didn't see the advice from, a, from prior to me. That would be uh, unusual. It's not uh, information that came to me. Um, but I do know that the Home Secretary has continued along the same path that I set during that week that uh, I was uh, in the office, uh, which was, of course, before uh, Rishi uh, Sunak became Prime Minister. OK, because, as you know, the suggestion is that Suella Braverman, uh, the previous Home Secretary, now uh, the present Home Secretary, um, ignored legal advice. I mean, that would have been wholly inappropriate, wouldn't it, if that was the case? It's hard for me, I, so I didn't see that advice, it's hard for me to comment on. Um, what I do know is the advice was very clear to me. I acted immediately on that advice. Uh, it may well be that numbers have been changing very quickly during that uh, period with new arrivals. Uh, and I note that she has continued along the same path. So, uh, as I say, I think we're, we're all moving in the same direction there. OK, do you support nurses going on strike for better pay? Well, look, I think first, the first thing to say is we all remember what an extraordinary job they were doing. My own dad, as I'm sure you recall, because we spoke at the time, was in hospital through uh, COVID. They were doing a, a, a great job. Uh, I know that a million NHS workers got £1,400 rise uh, last uh, year on top of, uh, I think, a 3% uh, rise. Um, I, I very much hope that the NHS uh, nurses and others can, can get this resolved because uh, clearly... Um, it would be damaging to everybody if nurses went on strike. Um, we all care about our NHS, we all care about our health service, so, so no one would want to see that happen, I think, probably including the nurses. So we uh, care about them enough to give them more money? Well, there's, a, there's an independent um, pay body that makes the recommendations. I, I, I believe we accepted it uh, last year. 
Um, so I'm not in a position to sort of preempt either what they decide or what the, the pay body does. But uh, as I say, I know a million workers got £1,400 extra uh, last year. And you know, everyone, it's in all our interests to see the NHS working. We all care passionately about it. We rely on it. And, uh, you know, strikes uh, won't help anyone. I hope that is resolved. How do you feel about Gavin Williamson's uh, messages to the then Chief Whip? Uh, well, I don't think they were... Uh, it was the right thing to do to send messages like that. I, I see they must have been sent in a moment of, of uh, frustration. Um, but, you know, I, I think generally it is the case that it's much better to, um, you know, write things which you would not uh, live to regret later. Uh, and, uh, and especially with, with colleagues, writing things which are uh, polite, even if you have a, a point of view to express, I, I think is not unreasonable. So I, I don't think he was right to send them. Prime Minister said the, the same, um, and uh, I know that the, uh, that the party is, is going through a process looking at them at the moment. How co I mean, how do you feel about working with somebody who feels it's appropriate to talk to women like that? Well, look, as I say, it's not messages that I would want to, 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 to see sent, and I would not send them. Um, they, they were sent, presumably in a moment of, of frustration, um, and uh, under a very different... Uh, period or atmosphere in, in Parliament um, and you know it's I always think never sort of send messages that you're going to regret in the in the cold light of day as it were and, and it was wrong that he sent them um, and uh, there is a process uh, now uh, looking at that. Uh, are you going to vote for Matt Hancock and I'm a celebrity? <laughs> I'm not no. Why not? Well, look, I just think he should be here looking after his constituents, um, yeah, you know, rather than uh, in the jungle somewhere. Uh, so, uh, no, I won't, I, won't be, I won't be voting for him, although I can't promise I'll be voting for anyone at all. So uh, that, that might just be a mission rather than anything else. Will you be watching, though? I mean, are you looking forward to seeing him having to eat crocodile anus? Tempting as that is, I, I think I'll probably be focusing on my job as business secretary uh, and, uh, and I, I'll be uh, off at uh, COP27 later this week as well. So I, I fear I might miss him, depending on how long he survives. Once <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, just a quick thought before I let you go. Uh, £60 billion pounds in cuts and tax rises. Most of it cuts? Well, let's wait and see. I, 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 I say, I know you've, you've done, I think it's your third attempt to tempt me into commenting on what will be in the uh, awesome statement. Everyone knows it's really important that we uh, do get these books to balance. We can't leave this debt to future generations. Apart from anything else, it's, it worries the financial markets, and that has the tendency to push up uh, rates if we're not careful. Now, uh, what Rishi Sunak and the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, have done is make sure that, uh, that, that, that you know, the, the concerns of the markets have been stabilised. But what we, we're working on with this awesome statement um, is a package which puts us on a, a really good path to reduce that debt in the medium term, but also support the most vulnerable people in society. So um, that's what we've been working on. Uh, and so you won't have to wait long to answer to all those questions on the, on the 17th okay. of November. OK, and it's definitely not worth a pound to see Matt Hancock um, eat witchy grubs. Well, maybe we'll do that on replay or something, I think. <laughs> Good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us from Teesside this morning. Thank you.